Hello, everyone. I'm Tammy Williams. Welcome to Tammy Dale Podcast. I'm so excited that we have today an Emmy Award winning, no, a two time Emmy Award winning <laughs> makeup artist. She's an inventor and creator of this great product called the Makeup Bullet, uh, Miss Eva Jane Bunkley. Yay! Yay! Eva, I want you to know that we have our very first, well, our first studio, live studio audience. Yeah, they're, 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 they're alive, so it's live. They're alive. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's the clapping in the background. Um, Eva, you have uh, worked in the film, and well, t television industry for a long, long time. A long, long time. Since uh, about 1993, I've been doing makeup professionally. Since yeah. 1993, mm -hmm. yeah. And you've worked on several people. Um, yeah. So tell us yeah. about some of the people you've worked that you beat your, their face. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because some celebrities kind of have their careers kind of come back around and mm -hmm. maybe younger people know them still. I don't know. Um, but like Hugh Grant was one of my first like really, really big celebrities when he was kind of early in his days. I've done Jamie Foxx. Um, I've got to work on The Rock, uh, oh. Cicely Tyson, mm -hmm. uh, Tyrese, Jennifer Holliday, uh, Judge Hatchett, um, Let's see, Randy so, Jackson, Mr. Jackson, yeah, I got yeah. to work with him for some shows. A whole yeah. slew of people. A whole slew of people. It just kind of varies. Usher, um, just mm -hmm. throughout the years, you know, people cross your path. Donny Osmond, I got to work with him a couple times for projects, so. Yeah. yeah. How did you get started in the industry? Um, um, you know, when I finished um, school, I thought that I was going to go into wardrobe. My major was uh, textiles and clothing. And I wanted to be a, they said, you know, wardrobe stylist, fashion stylist. Mm -hmm. And I did it for a few sets, and I really didn't like the work. I just didn't enjoy it like I thought I would. Uh -huh. And I was like, I don't think I could do this for years and years and years, you know? Okay, and yeah. um, I did makeup too. And I said, you know, I think I'm going to gravitate more towards the makeup because it came naturally. I was still in the the, the go, go, go atmosphere, the kind of, uh, I guess, the sexy atmosphere of, of being on sets mm -hmm, and everything. Mm -hmm. And everybody thought it was such an exciting life. You know, my friends in Ohio yeah. were like, oh, I want to move to Atlanta. That sounds so fabulous. <laughs> um, so I was still in the industry and still um, just... I don't like sitting still. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one wonderful thing about production because it's always just constantly changing. Yes, yes. it is, it is, mm -hmm. it is. So what has been, um, say, your most rewarding experience on set? Because you've worked in television. Mm -hmm. And first, let's talk about how you, um, you, you've had an opportunity to work in film. Yes, I've actually, worked in but film. But you so. decided that you didn't want to go that route of working on film, that you wanted to stay in television. Yeah. And you're doing TV right now. Yes. And, um, uh, you work with like news. You do a lot yes. of news network and you do interviews when, mm -hmm. you know. Exactly. I'm still a freelancer. Mm -hmm. I um, used to work in the local news market here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. like on a regular basis, like Monday through Friday. I was doing the anchors in the morning and then the evenings. And um, that was, it was a lot. It's, mm -hmm. it's like a very, very intense pace. Um, I did morning news, so I had to be in bed between 7 and 9 p.m. if I wanted to be fresh in the morning. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I liked just knowing my schedule, you mm -hmm. know? I liked the predictability of it. Um, so that was one reason that I did not want to get into film yeah. because I was a little spoiled by my hours. I worked about uh, six hours a day mm -hmm. and then I was done um, and I had the middle of the day free. And I knew that um, when I went into working on film sets, sets it wasn't the same. Yeah. So I, I have very, very close friends in the industry who work in film. So I tell them, you know, I'll day play, but you know, I don't want to be on for six weeks at a time. Right, right. Um, it's just wasn't something I wanted to do. And you had started a family as well. Yeah, that was, I, a, big part of that was a very big part of it. Um, I have two sons and they take a lot. They're very active and I like picking mm -hmm. them up from school. I like um, being at their their events. I mean, mm -hmm. and they know. They know mom will be there sometimes and won't. Like this morning, I was at the game all day until it was time to be here. Yeah, so yeah. I like the flexibility of freelancing. Um, sometimes the unpredictable nature can be challenging because it's hard to commit. Mm -hmm. When you commit to something, it really has to be something that you would say, okay, if this money comes, I'm going to say no to it. Right, because yeah. it's freelance business. And for those of you who are wanting to get into the industry, uh, two things. Um, 
it is a freelance world. You're all <laughs> you're looking for your next gig. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I like the choice that you decided to make. Um, the goal is to find mm -hmm. your niche. I always say there's a place for you in the film industry if you decide to be in it mm -hmm. in film slash television. But finding the right niche. Mm -hmm. You know, you made the choice that hey, I prefer not to do the film industry 12 mm -hmm. hours a day, 12, yeah. 14 hours a day. You prefer not to do that, yeah. but you want a more stable. Mm -hmm. um, if you will, stable yeah. hours uh, and still work in this in the industry. Yeah, so, so early home. on yeah. I did a lot more film set stuff. I'd mm -hmm. have friends like, hey, they knew and they were at um, production studios too working on television shows. Mm -hmm. So they'd call me over and say, hey, we got a bunch of extras today and I still got to kind of plug mm -hmm. in a little bit and it might be a 12 hour day but yes. it's just going to be one or two of them. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah. finding your niche, finding your place. Totally. And I tell young artists that mm -hmm. starting out, I tell them, I say, you know, Decide what type of makeup artist you want to be mm -hmm. and pursue that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. there's a whole range of things. Not only are we talking oh, yeah. about hours, we're talking about if you want to work in special effects, mm -hmm. if you want to do straight beauty makeup. Yeah, what if you, you want to be someone's personal. Person. And mm -hmm. I did that for a couple different people for like years, years long mm -hmm. stretches, yeah. and um, and that's its own beast too, mm -hmm. because their schedule is your schedule, so your mm -hmm. life is kind of second to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And you have to be on call, so. Oh, yeah. but that, that could be pretty fun too sometimes. Oh I'm yeah, sure. especially if you're working with somebody who's you know kind of at a high point in their career. Mm -hmm. You're going to be traveling a lot with them, going different places, meeting different people. So you know, it, it's just a myriad of possibilities when it yeah. comes to being um, in this art, this mm -hmm. creative environment, mm -hmm. this world of production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is this is art, you know. It is. I, I love it. It is. I watched her put her makeup on and she stung <laughs> my face at times uh, and just kind of watching the whole process. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, Eva, can you do just something simple? You know, just, just a little color in the on the eyes or lips. And I have to realize that my simple is different from her simple. <laughs> my simple is taking a <laughs> <laughs> taking uh, one brush, one color, and sh swipe. That's it, right? But you no, know, as a makeup artist, mm -hmm. she looks <laughs> like today when she I was doing my makeup. We're in the same space, and she looks over at me and goes like, like that. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was no judgment. Go ahead and confess. No judgment. No. No judgment. It's okay. You it's did okay. a beautiful job, didn't she? Yes, she did. <laughs> Studio audience, clap it up. <laughs> Thank you for the encouragement. <laughs> I appreciate it. But I learned a lot from this lady as far as, you know, makeup and what to do and what not to do. Uh, but, you know, what's so great is that you just, you, see, you, you went another step. Mm. Um, the makeup bullet. Now, the makeup yeah. bullet, as you guys can see here, and I'm so excited. I'm so glad. I mean, uh, just so innovative. Uh, she, this makeup bullet is in what currently um, in various beauty retailers on the east and west coasts, um, in the south. So yeah, you can find it Amazon, um, my website, themakeupbullet.com. Mm -hmm. You can find it, and in several different countries. Several different. I, I mean, I, I love it. Um, mm -hmm. when, I remember when you first, you know, started thinking about the makeup bullet, and uh -huh. and she would give me like the pro, the, the ones that well, didn't come ones. out right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so she's she. Okay, well, she. Uh, these are like different ones, different stages that. Yeah, I think the. I don't know stages. which one There's was some, first. Yeah. Uh, and that's just this look. Is this material. is this is an early stage <laughs> because that's just a block of foam. <laughs> hey, it's got to come. Foam. It's got to come from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember the ones that she would have manufacturers that she was like, no, it's not right. Tammy, you want this one? <laughs> You want to use this one? Yeah. Was, you know, I was fine. Sure. You know, makeup bullet. But um, I love the way the makeup bullet works and um, how you, well, to talk about how you came up with this idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've, I've told this story a million times. I'm trying to find the Cliff's Notes version. Mm -hmm. But I was on set at the news station and I was um, doing makeup on someone who needed to hurry up and get to set. Mm -hmm. And I am a messy artist. Everything is always spread out and I'm constantly searching for something. And that searching, you know, it wastes time. And the thing that I found myself searching for the most was my blending sponge. So I'm like, you know, and I'm getting frustrated and the person in my chair is getting a little kind of antsy like, okay, I got to go and I don't know what you're doing. So I was like, you know, oh my God, if this thing just could stay stuck to my finger, that'd be one less thing I'm looking for. And then it just kind of hit me like, ooh, you need to remember that. 
and I, you know, just did some searches, didn't see anything like it on the market, and was like, I want to create a sponge that just fits yeah. snug on your finger. And um, it, many, many years later, it, it came into fruition. It was years in development in my heart to develop the mm -hmm. courage just mm -hmm. to think that I could actually create something that I just thought of in my head. And um, once I set out on the journey to do it, it took about a year from um, actual like call, making phone calls to having it in my hand and them sending me like <clears throat> prototypes saying, hey, is this yeah. what you had in yeah. mind? So yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's wonderful um, come, well, idea. And I know when we use it, we, you can dip this in your blush, in your eyeshadow, ring in finger, a I ring, say ring finger, finger. Oops, ring, ring finger. finger. Now, when you're doing makeup, this is a little tip for y'all. Mm -hmm. The ring in the middle, those have the most delicate touch. So when you're working around your eyes, mm -hmm. your ring finger in your middle, the index finger is your your strongest, so it okay, can you okay. know do damage. But you know, some people stick it on their index anyway because okay. it's about you know where you feel comfortable and where you feel you have the best control. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. Can anybody? So this is not just for professional makeup artist oh, no. like yourself but no. someone like me who say I'm in a hurry in the morning and exactly because you can dip this in from and shadow, then just, you know. look I can hold my cell phone not that I want to hold my phone while I'm doing my makeup but mm -hmm. I can hold say another tool I can hold my mascara I can mm -hmm. hold my lipstick and it's I, it's speeding up my routine because I don't have to constantly you know pick it up put it down pick it up put it down and it lets me multitask so I'm mm -hmm. not committed to just holding mm -hmm. this sponge mm -hmm. in my hand yeah. so that yeah. was my idea behind it you know just yeah women on the go like us who are constantly you know moving yes. it's just like you want things that are going to give you a few more minutes to do what you really want to do and get on to your your life or even just right. stay in bed a couple extra minutes whatever right. that is yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. So just a little touch. Yeah, just a touch. Go. Yep, and the point makes it great to get around the eyes. Mm -hmm. So it, and then when you bend your hand, and I had um, a gentleman who gifted his aunt. She's an elderly woman, mm -hmm. and he said she's an old diva, and she couldn't hold her um, makeup brushes like she used to because she was having some arthritis and mm -hmm. dexterity mm -hmm. issues. And he gave her the makeup bullet, and she put it on her finger, and she said, "Oh my goodness," she said. I can apply my makeup, you wow. know, she, and, yeah. and so stories yeah. like that are like, okay, I am so glad that I just finally got out of my own way and yeah. stepped out and did it. Yeah. Yeah. And when you, and she actually has the, in fact, let's go into our, oh, our dream box into here. The dream box. Um, yep. Things that are like defining moments in her life. Okay. And let's see here. You want the first one? Yes. Okay. This one of these little girls right here. Your Emmy. Yes, this is one of my mm -hmm. my Emmys back in um, 2001 and 2002. Okay. Those are when I won my Emmys. Beautiful. And um, this is one of them. The other girl, you know, I realized they don't travel so well. And <laughs> her wings broke. I have to get, I have to see if I can get her replaced. Her okay. wings her broke? Her wings broke. I was so sad. Oh, my God. But that, that doesn't mean she loves you less. No, she just, she won't fly away. She won't fly away. Okay. It's pretty so heavy. It, it is. It is. Yeah. Okay, so we need to replace the, the other one with some more wings. Uh, yeah. Glory. My upgrade. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, uh -huh. Let's see what that, else. That, well, I actually took that. That's out, okay. Right? Yeah. Well, this was one of the first prototypes. You know, they just use whatever foam that they have available just to kind of get the, mm -hmm. the, um, the process down. Yeah. So it's very crude. I don't know if you can necessarily see it on camera, but it's just not as smooth mm -hmm. as what it is now because they were still trying to figure out how are we going to make this? Because it's guys, you know, it's guys who make products for, you know, big, huge companies and they're in machine shops and stuff like yeah. that. So they're not necessarily in the beauty industry. Right, and they didn't right. even necessarily get what I was trying to do. So it's just like, ah, this, I'm like, yeah, yeah kind of that. But we just need to, you know, make her prettier. Yeah. So these were one of the, yeah, the, almost, the first yeah. prototypes. Yeah. But so what was it like getting seeing this in the mail? Um, come, you like, know, it's one of those things where you're just like, you know, it's it's inexplicable because it's one of those things where you're just like, oh my god, like this came out of my heart, and I'm wearing it on my finger, and I did it, and. Yeah it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, there were, there were challenges, but yeah. still it, it was possible. 
Um, so now, you know, people come to me and they say, oh, I have this idea. That's the thing I've been thinking about. I say, go for it. Yeah, just kind of make know? it happen. Because yeah. if you don't do it, uh, somebody else probably will. Yeah. <laughs> somebody else probably will. And it's, yeah. like you said, it wasn't as hard. And sometimes um, we have these ideas, but we just, mm -hmm. we don't act on them because yeah. we think, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't yeah. achieve that. But um, you can. It's just yeah. sometimes it just takes putting one, doing one step at a time. Making a and, phone call and, yep. and hearing no and saying, okay, I'm going to make another phone call. And you hear no again. Mm -hmm. And you say, you know what, but do you know someone? They say, you know what, we can't, but I know someone who can. Yeah. And that's kind of was the process yeah. With, yeah. Um, with what happened, with the just trying to find okay. somebody that would make my dream. Come true, yeah. not quitting. Giving up caving. And yeah. And so this that. is actually your her trademark? That's the patent. That, that's a patent. That's a patent. Oh, yes. Ooh. Yeah. That's that's trademark. what oh. they send you from the um yeah, the US Patent and Trademark Office. So that's actually the patent for the sponge for the designs. This is beautiful. And that's granite. And that took I mean it takes about a year or so. Mm -hmm. And then that's that was um one of my first trademarks. So oh. Eva Jane, um, mm -hmm. as far as beauty, cosmetics, that kind of thing, I went ahead and trademark my name so that I can uh, do some more with it when it comes to, to beauty and products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just really, really love the idea of, you know, you starting a, as a makeup artist and mm -hmm. taking it a step, a whole nother step and mm -hmm. creating something and just kind of like truly, truly just making it happen. What advice <sighs> would you give people who are, um, number one, wanting to, you know, to do something like this? Yeah. Create a, a product. I mean, mm -hmm. you're official. You're an inventor. Yeah, I know <laughs> an inventor. <laughs> yeah, not from years ago, like today. <laughs> Isn't that pretty awesome? Yes. Somebody to invent something. Yeah. Oh gosh, can I have your? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my friend, the inventor. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What would you say? Well, it's important to do your research, of course, mm -hmm. um, and keep copious notes. This is um, what we in the inventor space call an inventor's notebook. So this has all my secrets in it. Mm -hmm. But it's um, actually, you know, good for if you had to, say, defend your creation. Because mm -hmm. you have all of your notes and you have everything kind of um, chronicalized. Is that a word? <laughs> in chronological in order. order. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's dated. Mm -hmm. um, you keep your notes in here, mm -hmm. and then so that's important to to kind of keep your notes. But then what I found is once you start to just kind of put it out and do your research, that it sometimes morphs, and you might pivot a little bit mm -hmm. because you might see something that the market needs a little more. Yeah. But. Um, I say go for, I, I went for the easiest thing because there are some other things that I would like to do, mm -hmm. but they require like maybe, you know, more um, complicated drawings and things like that that I would need, say, an engineer to do mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. something I could sketch up and then hand to somebody in a factory and say, hey, make this. Yeah, yeah. So I say start with the, you know, the easier of your ideas if you can. Mm -hmm. And then I say um, just be cognizant of the industry that you want to create or invent or um, revolutionize as you bring your wonderful idea because you're going to find yourself at those types of trade shows. Mm -hmm. So I always use the example of, you know, some you're going to the bathroom and you say, oh, this would be great on the toilet. You're going to find yourself at lots of plumbing conventions. Yeah. And is that what you want to, you know, concentrate on for the next five, ten years? Yeah. Is that the world you want to immerse yourself in? Mm -hmm. So think about that. So I'm in the beauty industry. So what I did was relate it to my industry. So I'm just around my peers. I'm around people who you know speak the same language I've mm -hmm. been here for a good 20 plus years mm -hmm. so it's it's comfortable for me and I'm not relearning mm -hmm. a lot of things mm -hmm. because when you are outside looking into an industry as say a lay person um, you might have some ideas that they're like oh yeah we, we solved that 15 years ago and we yeah. decided that we didn't need that because now we have this so it's it's very important to do your research to see is it even something that the industry needs yeah. you yeah. know but since I was in the beauty industry I'm like yeah we kind of do need this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay okay you know what let's talk about for a few minutes um, uh, you mentioned having this book so you could keep your notes mm -hmm. now you have went into certain retail stores uh -huh. <laughs> and looked on the uh, shelf yeah and saw a product that looked like the makeup bullet mm -hmm. 
yeah. probably smelled like it. <laughs> <laughs> and people thought it was, but mm. it's not. So those are called knockoffs. Knockoffs or dupes, short for duplicate. And if you buy one, you've probably been duped because mm -hmm. it's not the same experience. The makeup bullet, I um, purposely wanted to manufacture locally, um, source in our region in the United States, because I did want a lot of um, quality control. And just like I showed you kind of this block of foam, mm -hmm. I have many blocks of foam that were mailed to me from many different manufacturers because there was a certain quality that mm -hmm. I wanted, a certain texture, and this is one of the only, well, this is the only premium sponge out there that's designed for dry use. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those sponges out there, you're supposed to wet them, um, and part of that is because, you know, to open up the pore so it won't soak up all your product, and that's like a big thing, but the makeup bullet doesn't do that. Um, most of the well, all of the copycats, the knockoffs, the dupes mm -hmm. that come out, that have come out since I put my product on the market, mm -hmm. um, they're from China. And they are basically just throwing something onto the market that is like the makeup bullet. That's the, the sponge that you put, the finger sponge that you put on your finger, and they'll put their, their company name on it, their brand name on it. And so I've sent out lots of cease and desist, and I'm cur currently looking at legal actions against a lot of those companies because there was no product like this on the market. And the first China company that I saw that advertised that they made a, a finger sponge like my sponge, they used pictures that I took with my own cell phone. And they put it on their site and said, we make this. <coughs> and I'm like, that's they use not your pictures. My pictures. From your cell phone. From my, that I, you know, put advertise. Out, that I, yeah, in China, that they made my product. So when that happened, when that first happened, I said, okay, it's coming. I know it's coming. And it was maybe a year or so before I saw some companies, some stores that had, because then once they do it on those sites um, in China, then those other China factories, they say, ooh, this must be the new hot thing, and they'll copy it. So then you've got all these Chinese companies, and then when they do, when they already have companies that are buying from them in the U.S., they'll put these fake ones in the box and say, hey, would you like this too? We can make this too. This mm -hmm. is the new hot sale. That's what they call it, hot sale, hot sale. So, you know, that's it's an issue, but for me, I'm like, all I can do um, for the most part is focus on building my brand yeah. and letting people know this was the original cosmetic finger sponge that fits snug on a finger, that is a wonderful quality, that is patented, mm -hmm. and all of those others, because what they try to do is work around your patent. So they'll do a little change. They'll like make this a little flatter on one side. They'll shave off just one little side, and they'll mm -hmm. say, oh, it's different though. Come on now. They'll make the hole, instead of a round circle, oh, we're gonna make it a hexagon. So now it's way different from what you did. So, but I mean, you can see yeah. the spirit of it is still malicious to me. I mean, the intent is still to copy what I did, to sell it for a half or a third the price and even mm -hmm. less the quality. So, yeah. yeah. So guys, um, support uh, the makeup bullet. Yeah. Look for the words, the makeup bullet. Yeah. Um, Unless it says it's authorized by the creators of the makeup bullet, because there's one product out on the market um, that mm -hmm. is um, mm -hmm. an authorized dupe, but all the other ones, yeah, they're just out on their own doing. You know, it's it's one of those things that is par for the course because that's what that's why it's a bit challenging to be an independent inventor because huge corporations with multi-million dollars can come in and they'll just throw out crap. And if you had this kind of small niche of a market and people who knew about you, there's all these others who didn't who are going to see their crap first. I don't yeah. like that word. I apologize. But they're going to see the, the yeah, the, the dupe yeah. or the knockoff. They'll yeah. see it first and think, oh, this is new and innovative and amazing. Yeah. And then they get a bad experience from it and they'll say, this was a stupid idea. Yeah. But they didn't have, you know, from the heart of the founder, the, original the experience quality. Yeah, yeah. and quality that I put into it and all of the love and the effort and the time yeah. um, and the vetting yeah. that I put into it to make it a quality product. Yeah. 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 So, wow. That's my soapbox. 
Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. You guys, thank you for letting helps me. Helps us to kind of support you even more. Thank you. In your, your journey. Because we all have dreams and there's nothing worse than you having a dream and someone trying to snatch it away from you. Um, not a pretty thing. Haters. <laughs> So what we want to do now, Diva, <laughs> we want you to have a happy day. We have a happy box and we want you to have a happy day, okay, okay. coming okay. out of the subject because you've done so many great things and we here, guys, we're all proud of you and the work that you've done uh, in the you. industry. So pull a card, Ooh. pull a card from the happy box. Okay. You have your makeup bullet on. Mm, I'm taking like a, this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And pop it open. Okay. Pop, pop, pop. Yep. And if you could read it. Find what brings you joy and go there. Jan Phillips. Find what brings you joy. And so what go do you think there. about that and go there? Hmm. Well, I think when you are on the pursuit of your dreams, mm -hmm. then that's what you pursue. You keep your eyes on the prize. And in that journey, you know, that's where your your joy is. Because if you continue to let that, that adversity and those mm -hmm. types of things slow you down or take you off course, yeah. then you're not going to have true happiness. So I think yeah. it's about, it is about the journey, you know? It is. And there's, there's nothing more exciting than working 8 to 10 to 12, 14 hours a day mm -hmm. on something that you really love yeah. versus something that you don't want a place you don't want to be, mm -hmm. that you're not happy. It's so much time in our lives. Mm -hmm. And I always say that we only get so much time. Yeah. And um, yeah. so we want to make it's it precious. as precious and um, as joyful as can be. Yeah. And I like this word, go. That's action. It's telling you, you know, it's it's a call to and action. Go. Find what brings you joy and go, go there. there. Go there. Go there. Go there. Go. Thank you, Eva, for joining us today. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, studio audience. Woo! Thank you, people at home watching. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you next time on Tammy Dale Podcast. Bye-bye.